couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about my move from Tennessee to Los Angeles to pursue my acting career. And I said if anyone had questions, to leave them in the comments, and someone did. Talisha, I hope I'm saying that right, left a multi-part question in the comments, and I'm going to answer those questions in this video. The first part of the question is, what advice do you have to give to a new actress coming to LA? The first thing that comes to mind is to have a plan. And maybe at some point that plan's gonna get thrown out of the window, but as they say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So I think it's really important to have a plan that addresses four things that I'll talk about now. The first thing is, what are you gonna do for work? It's a sad truth, but you probably won't come out here making a living off of acting right away. So you have to think about what you're gonna do for work. And that's a little bit complicated because it needs to be something that's flexible enough to allow you to take time off for a shoot or take time off for auditions, but still give you enough money to pay rent. The good thing about right now is that work from home jobs are booming. And on top of that, self-taping is also not going anywhere anytime soon. So the opportunity to be able to work from home and also do most of your auditions from home is a very real opportunity and that could make life a lot easier for you, especially starting out in the city. My advice is also to think about a skill or a talent that you already have that you can use for money. For instance, there was a portion of time when all I did was freelance editing and that really gave me a lot of flexibility in my schedule. Of course, the old standbys are always a great option. I'm talking about the restaurant industry. So serving or bartending, both can be pretty lucrative and you can usually do them part time. And the good thing is you probably work with a lot of other creatives who are understanding and open to covering shifts and trading a shift for a shift whenever you have a shoot or an audition or something like that. Another option is the route that I took and that is fitness training, specifically group fitness training, because it usually pays well for a short amount of time and you don't have to invest a lot of time marketing and finding new clients the way you would if you were a personal trainer. The second thing to think about is where you're gonna live. Before I moved out, I did a ton of research about all the little areas and neighborhoods in LA and also thought about where I might be working and tried to position myself well for that. For instance, I chose Studio City, which is near most of the studios, and it's near Hollywood and Burbank, which is where most in-person auditions happen. As I said before, rent prices are going up, so you might consider looking into a service that pairs roommates or finding a roommate online or something like that that can take the burden off and make the moving process easier. The third thing to think about is finances, specifically thinking about what you might do if you run into hard times. Especially after what we just experienced with the COVID-19 pandemic, I knew a lot of actors who came out here eager to pursue their dreams and ended up going home a few months later because everything shut down. And even in my own journey before that, I've run into situations where my income sources disappeared. So it sucks, but it's a good idea to think about the worst case scenario. What would you do if you didn't have income? Do you have enough savings or do you have family or friends you can rely on? Credit cards, loans, something of that nature. Um, something that could just kind of prop you up in the event of some crazy thing happening and you still needing to get by while you're out here. And the fourth thing is just a bit of advice about headshots and real footage. These are two things that you can get right where you are. You can find a good photographer and get some good headshots. And if there's independent productions in your town, you can be in some of those and get some good footage for a reel. Or you can shoot your own reel footage. You can hire a filmmaker in your local town to shoot you and another actor doing a scene. Or shoot yourself doing a monologue so that you have some footage to put on the casting sites to go along with a good headshot. This is gonna be very important when you're looking for representation when you come out. And the industry as a whole is becoming very video oriented. So casting directors, managers, agents, they wanna see footage. And so the more high quality footage you can get of you performing, the better. The second part of the question is, for beginners, do you think there is more background work or work period? And is it easier to book auditions in person or virtually? I will address the background work part of that first. There is a lot of background work available for aspiring actors out here. Central Casting is the go-to company, 
and they have a really good system going now. When I first moved out, you'd have to call and see if they had anything available. But these days, after you go through their somewhat tedious registration process, they'll shoot you text messages asking if you're available for what they're casting for. And if you click yes, not all of them, but some of them will book you as background for that show. And after a long day, you'll get a check. And that is a really good way to supplement your income. The only caveat is they are very long days. You'll be working from eight to 12 hours, sometimes a little bit more. And although the money is good, it's just something to keep in mind that if you're spending 12 hours on set as background, that's time that you're not auditioning and you're not doing other productions. The thing to keep in mind is that background work isn't really resume work. There is a chance that you get upgraded to a speaking role or become one of the core background group. Like let's just say there's a baseball team and you become one of the people that are always on that baseball team. So, and you know, as they shoot in the locker room and things like that, you're always in the shots. And that's very good work and very lucrative work. However, if you're doing that for background, then that means that you're not doing that for principal work. So it's just something to think about. In terms of work in general, there is always something casting in LA. And that's the beautiful thing about this city. The one caveat is, especially when it's non-union productions and independent productions, you have to be a little bit careful and vet some of the filmmakers and the quality of work that you might be involved in. Don't just say yes to everything. Really take some time and think about what kind of work you want to do in your career and tailor the things that you submit to to that goal that you have in mind. Okay, the second part of that question was, is it easier to book auditions in person or virtually? That I think is tough to say because I've had a lot of luck with virtual auditions and the thing that I do like about it is that you get to send in your best work. You submit a self tape, you can do a hundred takes of it and then send in the best take that you like the most. But it is kind of tedious and you do miss that one on one connection that you can have with another human being in the casting room. Like you never get to see the casting director in person or the casting assistant. And that is kind of a bummer because you can't really form those relationships. The other good thing about it though, is that it works around your own schedule. So even if it's last minute, you can shoot it at midnight if you have to, like if you have to work or something like that and just get it in whenever you can. The good thing about in-person auditions is that you do get to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the casting director and build those relationships in that way but you have to come in with everything ready. You might have to sit in traffic on the way there. You might have to block off a whole four hour time block for five or 10 minutes in the room. So it just depends. But in terms of booking, I don't really think that there's much of a difference between booking virtually or booking in person. But all that's to say, I don't think that self tapes are going anywhere. And I actually like them for initial auditions. For callbacks and steps beyond, I think in-person is the way to go. And, and that's kind of a good thing because you've already been pre-selected. The casting director has already liked your work when they meet you. And I think that's kind of a better way. And it works out better for us because we get to keep more of our time. But once again, self-taping can be very tedious. So until you get a system down, it probably is still very time consuming. I don't know, it's kind of a toss up there. The next part of the question is, where is a good start? Actors access, what good casting network? So you definitely want to have a profile on Actors Access. It's one of the most used casting sites, and that's where most of the film and television show auditions are, along with some pretty high quality independent work. I recommend being on casting networks as well because a lot of promo and commercial work happens there, as well as some independent casting as well. If you're non-union and you're just starting out, both of those are essential. I also recommend Backstage if you're just starting out because they have some pretty high quality paying independent work on there as well. I'm not on there myself anymore and the last time I was on there, there was a lot of reality TV and internet promo video things on there that I wasn't really interested in, but it might be something you are still interested in starting out and I recommend checking it out either way. All right, I think that was a little long-winded, but I hope I answered all of your questions. And if not, you are more than welcome to put some follow-up questions in the comments, or if anybody else has a question, go ahead and drop it in the comments. I'll try to answer that in a later video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.